Yes, hello everyone. Uh, today we are going to be discussing our first topic in mechanics, which is vectors. Like vectors, we are covered with, is a continuation of the work you covered in O level. And here we are going to introduce ourselves to what we need to know in vectors at A level. At O level, you were introduced to vectors and you dealt with vectors. You wrote down the definition of vectors. And I believe you will define the vector as a quantity which has both magnitude and direction. And you went ahead and you learned about the position vector and the, dis and the displacement vector. You say the position vector will always be a vector which shows a point with reference to the origin. For example, I have my point P here. If I'm talking about a position vector, then OP will be the position vector when we are considering the origin O. Then we went ahead and dealt with displacement vectors still in our O level. And we said if I create another point Q here with the coordinate X2, Y2, if I move from P to Q, the vector P Q becomes my displacement vector, which we know how to get as O Q minus OP. So what we learned in O level here is of much use. This is just a continuation of the O level work. However, what you need to know in vectors at A level, first of all, you must be well conversant with adding vectors. For example, if I give you a vector OP and I give you its coordinate is 2, 3 and I give you O2, its coordinate 1, 1 and I tell you to find for me maybe OP plus O2, I believe all of us can get this by simply adding 2, 3 plus 1, 1, and we get the answer as a 3, 3. So that was learned in our O level. The same applies to subtraction, multiplication by a scalar. So example will bring about the working to mind those who have forgotten, and the magnitude of a vector was also covered. So A level brings us to what we call the unity vectors, and also brings in a term which we call resultant of vectors. We go ahead and look at what you call the dot stroke scalar product of vectors and the representation of vectors. So that is what our unit today is going to be capturing for us. And for today, we want to first of all look at the representation of vectors. Now when we talk about representation of vectors, in vectors basically, our vectors in all level we only dealt with the case one where we learned a vector with two dimensions. For example, when I look at my point P, X, Y, if I'm trying to the position vector O, P, it will simply be X, Y, just written like that. However, when we come to A level, we go ahead and look at vectors in three dimensions, where we consider the coordinate, the Y axis, the X axis, and the Z axis. And for our X axis, we are saying in this case, if you look at the corner of a house, it brings out this ideology very well. Because you have a line that runs from the top, you have a line that runs from the wall, this one end, and the wall, the other end, creating a corner with three lines. That is the three dimension. So any point in space will have displacement from the ground, displacement from the one side and the other, causing a coordinate x, y, z, and our position vector becomes x, y, and z. Now, sometimes in vectors, we are going to come across very many vectors written with letters i, j, and k. Now, the letters i, j, and k, we are going to come and discuss what we are calling unity vectors. And i, j, and k are simply unity vectors in the x a unity vectors, we are going to see what a unity vector is. A unity vectors in x, y, and z direction, respectively, respectively. So they are simply used to represent the direction. The i is representing the x direction. The j is representing the y direction. And then the k representing the z direction. And we are going to look at that when we're looking at an example. So we want to move directly. Since the topic is not very new, we want to cross ahead and do some example where we shall talk about the unity vector in, the, in, in details, the resultant of vectors, and then the dot stroke scalar product of vectors in our example.
we now close on to the explanation of unit and resultant vectors and dot product. Now, what we call the resultant of vectors, this refers to the vector which represents the sum of a given set of vectors. So whenever you are asked to find the resultant, that means what you are going to do is simply to find the sum of a given set of vectors. For example, if I'm given vectors A and B, if C is the resultant, then my C will simply equal to A plus B. Now C becomes the resultant of the, of the vector. So that is what we simply mean by a resultant of vector. I know you didn't cover that at all level. You did the working, but you didn't know what you were finding. But we are saying in this level, you will find questions where you are simply asked to find resultant of vectors. And we are saying it simply requires you to find the sum of the given vectors, the resulting, the, the result of what happens to the body, which is undergoing what we, and which, is, which is influenced by the vector we see. So we are going ahead and talking about the unity vector. We are saying this is a vector whose magnitude is 1. A unity vector is a vector whose magnitude is 1. So in case any vector, we are saying any vector can be expressed as a unity vector. In other words, you can find a vector which has magnitude 1, magnitude one in the case we are given a vector. For instance, for a vector A, its unity vector can be found as a cap, this one is read as a cap, which is equal to, you get the vector divided by the magnitude. So whenever you are asked to get a unity vector, your final answer will be a vector which has magnitude 1. And we are saying in order to get that unity vector, you get the vector, divide it by its magnitude, as we are going to see in our example. We finally close on to what you call the dot stroke scalar product of vectors and we are saying if you consider vectors a and b the illustration is here if i have two vectors a and b having an angle between them theta then the dot product which we call a dot b will simply be given as the magnitude of a times magnitude of b cosine of the angle so if you know all of this that is what is required of you to know before we cross on to pi and perpendicular vectors. So we now want to look at an example where we are going to calculate the resultant of the vectors, the unity vector, and then we see how to use what you call the dotty product. If the words are not clear, please just follow the example and everything shall be very okay. Okay, we go for our example now where we are going to be illustrating how to get the unit vector of A and the unit vector of B and the resultant of A and B, the dot product of A and B, and finally, we shall calculate the angle between. In this equation, we are going to simply apply our knowledge of unit vector. We have said a unit vector is given by, we get the vector divided by its magnitude. For example, if I'm going to find this symbol here, a cap, we read it as a cap, simply represents the unity vector of A. So we are saying any vector, if I have A and I want to get a cap, I will get A divided by its magnitude. That gives the unity vector. So in my question here, my vector A, we said this one represents X, this is the Y, this is the Z. So I have a vector A which equals 2i, 2i plus j plus k, which can as well be written as 2, 1, 1. Then I have a vector B which is equal to 3i minus 4j, which can as well be written as 3, negative 4. Since k is not there, we can take a 0. We have chosen to deal with vectors in a three dimension because with the two dimensions, we dealt with them as that in all level, but we shall also have them in our next example. So to get a cup, I need the magnitude of a vector. I believe all of us will remember that to get magnitude of a vector, 
I'll simply find the square root of 2 squared plus 1 squared plus 1 squared, which is the square root of 4 plus 1 plus 1, giving us 6. So my ve unit vector of A is going to be given by, we get the vector A, which is 2, 1, 1, divide it by the square root of 6. Now this gives us, this is the same as 1 over square root of 6 into 2, 1, 1. And at the end we shall have 2 over root 6, 1 over root 6, and then 1 over root 6. That becomes our A cap, the unit vector of A. Similarly, if I want to get B, the unit vector of B, I'm going to say my B cap will become the vector B, the vector B divided by the magnitude of B, which can simply become my vector B is 3, negative 4, 0, divided by its magnitude, which will be the square root of 3 squared plus negative 4 squared plus 0 squared. Shall have 3, negative 4, 0, divided by, we have 9 plus 16, which is the square root of 25, giving us 5. So we shall have our final answer as B cup, which is the unit vector of B, which is the same as 1 over 5 into 3 negative 4 0. And if we multiply 1 over 5 inside, we shall have 3 over 5, which is 0 0.6, negative 4 over 5, which is negative 0 0.80. 0. That becomes the unit vector of B. And if you try getting the magnitude of this, your magnitude of B cup. I want you to check at home. Your magnitude of B cup will give you 1. So we are saying a unity vector is always going to be a vector whose magnitude has 1. If you try getting the magnitude of B cup, your final answer is going to be 1. Please check. Get a calculator and check using the formula for magnitude which is said to simply get the sum of squares and the root. So that is how we are going to be getting the unit vectors in our topic of vectors. Then we go ahead and look at how do we get the dot product of vectors. How do we determine what we are calling A dot B. Now in this video, we are going to simplify. We now go ahead to find, we are done with getting the unit vector of A, unit vector of B. We go ahead to find the resultant of A and B, which we say the resultant of vectors will simply mean I'll get my vector A, which we have seen is simply 2, 1, 1, plus, resultant, plus B, which is 3, negative 4, 0. The 0 comes in as a result because our B, which is given as 3i, minus 4j is the same as 3i minus 4j. Since k is not there, I can add on 0k. So that's why we are saying 3 negative 4 0. And our total now becomes 5 negative 3 1. That becomes your resultant. So this is our answer for Roman 3. Now to find the dot product is also easy. We are saying our a dot b will simply mean I get my A, which is 2, 1, 1, dot our B, which is 3, negative 4, 0. When we multiply, the dot product is simply, you multiply 2 times 3 plus 1 times negative 4 plus 1 times 0. When you do this, you go on adding. This is 6 minus 4 plus 0, giving me 2. What we get, now that becomes our dot product. But we also said, that our a dot b will equal to magnitude of a magnitude of b cosine of theta where theta is the angle between the vectors so we now have our a dot b as 2 we got the magnitude of a which was the square root of the sum of the squares which was 2 squared plus 1 squared plus 1 squared times the square root of the magnitude of b 
which was 3 squared plus negative 4 squared plus 0 squared cosine of theta. So we end up having our cosine of theta being equal to 2 divided by the square root of this is 4 plus 1 plus 1, which we got as square root of 6 times the square root of 25. If you place on here, you get your final answer, which is going to be the cos inverse of 2 divided by the square root of 6 times 25. That becomes the angle. I'm leaving that for you. Replace the calculator and get your final answer. Thank you.